Photographs also play a key role in storytelling, and we have a lot to share with you uh, in digital photography today. Lightroom has been an absolute force since we introduced it over a decade ago. It's truly transformed digital photography. So we're excited to show you how we're evolving Lightroom today for a world beyond the desktop. We are unleash unleashing a new photography system that is streamlined, integrated, cloud-based, and that is accessible no matter where you are or what surface you're working on to truly unleash your creativity. Maria Yap, our head of product management for digital imaging, will share our vision for the future of photography. It's my pleasure to welcome Maria to the stage. <laughs> My love affair with photography began as a teenager. It inspired me to get a job so I could buy my first camera and interchangeable lenses. As you can see, these are some of my first photos. Over the years, I discovered that photography captures the world as you see it, as you experience it, even as you imagine it. Let's think about it. From its very inception over two centuries ago, photography has been rooted in innovation and technology. And these advancements have always been the impetus behind the progression of photography. Removing technical barriers <laughs> makes it easier for more people to enjoy and unleash an even higher level of creativity. Looking at the history of photography, the impact of technology is easily recognized. Whether it's the Kodak Brownie camera utilizing roll film, or Polaroid giving us immediate gratification, each innovation made photography more accessible. In 1990, photography fundamentally changed, starting with Adobe releasing Photoshop and pioneering image editing and unlocking the door to photo manipulation outside of the traditional darkroom. The rapid adoption of DSLR cameras, each with their own proprietary RAW format, led to the proliferation of digital images across desktop hard drives. And as a result, Adobe introduced Lightroom to manage, organize, and edit your catalog of images on your desktop, giving you that ultimate control, and develop the open DNG file format to standardize raw photography workflows. The camera phone marked a new era, and suddenly we all are photographers. Social media ushered in a new uh, era. Um, <laughs> Social media ushered in us casually photo taking and sharing and becoming that daily activity for billions of us. So where are we today? Technology and photography continue to evolve and even more photos are being captured across a wide variety of devices. We don't want to be tied to the desktop and the solutions remain disjointed and too constrained. We've been cobbling things together to adapt to our changing needs. And as much as we love Lightroom, it was developed for a desktop-centric photography workflow. And we need a more flexible system across more devices. We need more than a single application. We need a new system. Today, I'm excited to announce that we've built you that system Lightroom CC, and a big part of that system is the all-new Lightroom CC desktop app that's been completely reimagined, redesigned, and rebuilt to work fully with the cloud. With the new Lightroom CC, we have a complete photography system across desktop, mobile, and web that enables you to edit, organize, store, and share from anywhere. Our new Lightroom CC service gives you all the power of Adobe's world-class imaging technology 
combined with Adobe Sensei's artificial intelligence capabilities. This powerful, intuitive, modern app system is accessible to everyone on any device. Let's take a look at Lightroom for everyone who loves photography. As you can see, the new Lightroom CC is a complete photography system across desktop, mobile, and web. But we know that many of you have invested a lot in the current Lightroom you've been using. We're now calling that Lightroom Classic. <laughs> Rest assured, we'll continue to improve it as we develop out the new service. In fact, today, we're updating Lightroom Classic with significant performance improvements and editing enhancements. And now, I'd like to introduce Brian O'Neill Hughes, someone that I've worked with for many years, to show you how the all-new Lightroom CC that he uses almost daily complements his photography workflow. Thank you, guys. I'm thrilled to share the entirely new Lightroom CC, and I'm really honored to show it as well. A really long time ago, about 2006, I think, I got to show one of the first public betas of what would become Lightroom, uh, and it's, it's been an amazing journey. There were a lot less people in that demo. Uh, so thank you, Maria and Winston and the whole team for giving me this honor. I want to start um, by saying that Lightroom really is a complete system. And as such, we're going to look at it across a few different screens. I'm going to look at it on the desktop, on the Surface Book 2, the 15-inch. This is a brand new device that was just announced yesterday. And then we're going to move over to the iPad Pro and Apple Pencil, and then over to the iPhone 8 Plus. And then I'll come back to the web. So we're going to look at it across a lot of different screens. We've really uh, worked on making this consistent so it's going to look very familiar across them. I'll make sure and tell you when I'm moving. OK, so let's start on the desktop, because this is where we've done the most work. And the first thing that we notice on the desktop, the only thing that we notice on the desktop, is the images. This is the center of my workflow. And I have a lot of images here. Not only do I have a lot of images in this collection, but I have thousands, tens of thousands. I have access to all of my images wherever I am. And that's a really big part of this system. And of course, I have a lot of different ways of finding what I'm looking for. I've got stars. I've got flags. I've got cameras and locations. I should note, and you'll see this on screen, I don't have any keywords. I've never had any keywords. I'm terrible about this. Feels good to get that off my chest. Just I've never done it. I know I'm supposed to, but I never, ever have. And what's wonderful with Lightroom CC is this is where Adobe Sensei comes in, because searching in Lightroom CC is as simple as just typing in what you're looking for. So I've got uh, well over 100 images in this collection. Let's just search for cat, something fairly simple. And I see all of the cats in this collection, very different cats. Let's give it something a little more challenging. Let's look at horses, plural, more than one horse. Lots of pictures of me and my kids uh, and my wife and more than one horse. Let's look at 
people. I'm just typing these in, no keywords, and Sensei is doing all of the work, gives me the results for the people. Like any proud father, I take tons of pictures of my children. So let's constrain this to kid. And what do I get back? I get back my boys, Miles and Liam, me as a child, and my goat as well. Uh, technically correct. Well played, Sensei. All right, so let's take this image of Miles. And I actually shot this with Lightroom CC on the phone, which allows me to capture a raw DNG file. And I love the composition of my son in this shot, but it's a little bit dark. So let's talk about editing in the new Lightroom CC. Lots of different controls here, tons of power. This could be intimidating to some people. Uh, we also have some wonderful presets. And what's great about the presets here is that as I scroll over them, I get a preview and I see the sliders moving, so they're educating me on how Lightroom CC works. Now, for this particular image, I'm just going to click one button to adjust the tonality. I'm going to click Auto. And if you notice, it dynamically adjusted the image. It moved a bunch of sliders based upon the content of the image. Did a really nice job. Now, this being a RAW file, I can adjust the temperature and the tint really quickly and easily, and it looks wonderful. So I'm really pleased with that image. Those changes will be reflected across any device I look at. Not only are the photos in the cloud, but the settings are as well. OK, so let me search for another image really quickly here. Let's do desert truck. I'm going to combine where I was with the subject. And I get a host of different returns there. This is an unedited file uh, that I shot recently on a trip. And with this one, I want to make it look sort of weathered and older, kind of like those older cameras Maria was mentioning before. Again, I'm going to start with auto. I use auto for everything. And when the old days auto was a bad word, auto is really smart now, and it works really, really well. I'm going to reduce the contrast on this image. I'm going to reduce the saturation a little. Again, I'm looking for this sort of older aesthetic. Let me soften the clarity, just make it sort of look a little dusty. and. Uh, Give it a slight vignette or darken the corners. I'm going to apply a crop. Let's do a, a simple 1-1 one, one crop here. Again, sort of a square look like those old brownie cameras. And I should stress that cropping like everything, I can undo that later because this is all non-destructive. Now, lots of different things I can do here. I can copy settings. I can revert to the original. I could go over to Photoshop. But at this point, what I want to do is I want to talk about the connection between these devices. So let's move from the desktop. Let's move from this cool new Surface Book 2 over to the iPad Pro. And I love the iPad Pro. I've got one of these in my camera bag. What it allows me to do is immediately move my images into this system. And I can edit wherever I am. It's wonderful workflow. Uh, as soon as I launch Lightroom CC here, it's really important to note that not only do I see the images, but I see them just as I left them. Here's the image of Miles that's corrected. Here's the image that I just worked on. And while I spent quite a bit of time on this on the desktop, I can use this image. I can just copy the settings from it. I'm going to copy everything except for the crop. And I can drop those settings onto another image. So this is a shot that I took in Cuba recently. And I'm just going to go ahead and paste those settings in there. And I can go ahead and change that a little as well. Maybe I want to bring the vignette in, round it out, soften it. I have all of that control. I have all of that flexibility. Now, before I leave the iPad Pro here, uh, there is one thing about the shot of Miles that bothers me a little. And it's that his eyes are dark. And this is why professional photographers use a flash outdoors. I didn't do that in this case. But that's OK, because I've got some wonderful selective edits here brush-based edits. And so I'm going to use Apple Pencil to just come in here and ever so lightly scribble over his eyes there. Don't worry, I'm not going to do anything spooky here. Just going to open up the shadows just a tiny bit and maybe adjust the color while I'm in here. Go away from that warm cast to the cool blue. I don't want to go too Paul Newman there. Somewhere right in between. I'm really pleased with, with that. Um, love using Apple Pencil for that. OK, so obviously, I can do some serious work there on the iPad. Let's move over to the phone now. The phone is the device that we all have with us all the time. We have it with us constantly, and we use it to shoot and to share. Well, with this new system, there's every reason that we can use it to edit as well. So I'm going to take the iPhone here. I'm going to launch Lightroom CC. And again, you'll see Miles with the brighter eyes there, the car and the truck that we edited, the image from Cuba, all synced, all up to date. Now, here's an image that I shot with the Leica Q. It's a full-resolution file. It's a 24-megapixel file. 
and it needs a lot of work. I love the image, but it needs a lot of work. So let's edit this one here. Uh, the first thing I'll do is straighten it out. Uh, compositionally, it's kind of a nightmare. I was literally standing in the snow when I took this. Um, so I'm going to move that up and get that nice rule of thirds overlay. That looks better. There's really there's two problems with this image. There's the foreground and there's the sky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use selective edits. And first, let's drop one on the foreground. And with the foreground, what I want to do is just desaturate it. It's got this sort of cold cast, so I want to desaturate that. Uh, and then the other thing I want to do is soften it a little. It's just a little bit distracting. Soften that right in the foreground there. Now, it looks better, but it's still missing the drama in the sky. So that's OK. I'm going to add another selective edit. And just as I'm doing this, you know, for those of you who use Lightroom, I just think, I think it's amazing that I can apply multiple graduated edits to a full resolution RAW file on my phone. It blows my mind. Okay. Yeah, right? <laughs> Photographers. I can come in here. I can warm that up. And the drama, for me, I love dehaze. I can use dehaze here, which acts like polarized sunglasses to just cut through that atmospheric haze. So there it is, before and after. Now, at this point, before and after. Thank you. <laughs> At this point, there's a lot of different things that I can do with the images. Of course, I can share them to, to social or, or share them locally. But keep in mind, these files, they live in the cloud. So sharing full resolution files, no matter how many you have, is as simple as sending a link. So let's go back to the desktop and look at the web experience here. Because again, this is a complete system, and I can go to the web as well. Here I am on the web. It looks very consistent. I see those same images just as I left them. And you'll notice that I have a link. And I can send this link around, and people can collaborate or give me feedback, and of course, download the full resolution files. Now, if I'm a Creative Cloud member or a Creative Cloud Photography Plan member, I also have Adobe Portfolio. If you guys haven't used this, you should check it out. It allows you to build your own photo website really quickly and easily. Now, I have a lot of images, so I've already started this process. Let me just show you how it works. If I want to come in here and preview this, not only can I preview images here locally on the desktop, but if I want to see how this looks on a phone, I can pull that up as well. And when I'm ready, I just go ahead and I push that over right there to my live site. That's bhughes.myportfolio.com, and there's all of my images. So lots of ways to share. So we looked at a lot of things across a lot of different devices, the new Surface Book 2, the iPad Pro, the phone, back on the web. I want to tell you guys, on a personal note, because Maria mentioned this is for people who love photography. I love Lightroom, and I've loved Lightroom since day one. I transitioned to this new system about a year and a half ago, and I have never looked back. I've been using it ever since, and I love it. And I think you guys are going to love it too. So before I hand things back to Maria, I just want to say thank you very much for this honor. I really appreciate it. Thank you. So Brian showed you how easy it is to access all your photos from any device and how seamlessly you can make non-destructive edits because everything is stored in the cloud. Everything we shared is available today. The complete Lightroom CC system, Lightroom Classic, and portfolio are included in your Creative Cloud All Apps plan. So if you're an All Apps member, you have all this. And one of our most popular plans, Creative Cloud Photography, just got better. The all new Lightroom CC, Lightroom Classic, Photoshop, Portfolio, Spark Premium, as Michael showed you earlier, and Cloud Storage. So download your desktop and mobile apps, Sign in with your Adobe ID and get started. I can't wait to see how you capture your world with Lightroom. Thank you.